Hello baseball fans, I'm Chris Durrell. I'm here from RotorPros.com to bring you my overview of my DFS MLB cheat sheet with opening day coming tomorrow. Just want to get you a, you know, a little bit better understanding of how to go through the cheat sheet and use it for your research um, leading up to lineup lock on a daily basis when playing daily fantasy baseball. Before that, if you're not a RotorPros member, make sure to get over to RotorPros.com. Click on that top right hand corner sign up button and you're going to get a free trial to come in and check out what we're all about. We cover MLB, NHL, PGA, NASCAR, NBA, NFL, uh, soccer there as well. So we do have a lot to offer. We have a community chat, which is a Slack chat, main members chat for chat, and we've got uh, a space for MLB weather updates. We've got a space for MLB lineups, and I'm also working on adding more to the sheet each and every day, just um, stuff that customers have given me feedback about. So there will be more stuff coming. So with that, let's jump right into the sheet here. So the first tab you're going to see once you log in is going to be the starting pitcher sheet. Um, it's got every pitcher listed for the day. As you can see, with tomorrow being uh, DraftKings split it up and they've got a five-game early slate and a nine-game main slate. Both slates have left, or both sides, sorry, have left off the Boston Seattle game. I'm sure there's going to be some showdowns for that as well, but we're going to look at those two main slates here for the most part. So on the sheet every day, if there's going to be split slates, it's going to be shown here on the left side. E just stands for early, um, so I can sort them out. So we're looking at these guys here for the early slate and then these guys for the main slate. So it's got all the pitchers listed team, opponent which way that pitcher throws, his DraftKings FanDuel salary, um, the odds, the over-under in that game, and then we get into park factor, so it shows which park they're, they're in, and then we're going to talk about park factor. So we're just going to jump over, and how I calculate that and bring that in is from my park factor tab here. So what I've done is gone and compiled um, the park factors from the last three years, looking at... Um, I also here, I'm, I'm ranking this by runs, and then I'm ranking this by home runs as well. Just there is some teams and some parks out there that maybe give up a lot of runs, but hold, but really limit the power that is out there. So I really wanted to sort that out this year, so that's a, something new. Um, so then I rank all the last three years, and then I put it together into an average uh, ranking over the last three years for that park when it comes to runs as well as home runs. So that is when you're looking at this park factor, this is park factor runs and this is park factor home runs. So for a pitcher, um, it, it, no matter where you find park factor on the cheat sheet, the lower the number just means a, a hitter's park. So for instance, we're looking at the Yankees here. The Yankees over the last three years averaged the sixth best hitter's park in baseball when it comes to run scoring they were number one when it came to power, which maybe to some that might be surprising because Colorado is usually known as the number one hitters park. When it comes to home runs, Yankee Stadium over the last three years is is at number one. So when you're looking at pitchers here and you're looking at park factor, what you're going to be looking for is green. Anywhere on the sheet, the color green when you're looking at stats is going to be good for the player that we're looking at, and it's going to be you know bad um, when you're looking at the red. So, for instance, Tanaka's in a bad park here um, in Yankee Stadium on the sheet. And then we get into the 2018 stats. These are going to quickly roll over into 2019 stats once we get some, um, you know, a week or two into the season. But for now, we're going to be looking at 2018 stats. So this is Tanaka's ERA last year with his XFIP. His K per nine, there's going to be another show. I'm going to be going over some of these stats and what they mean. But pretty much ERA, um, we've heard for years. Um, XFIP is it's fairly new. I wouldn't say it, it's brand new by any means, but it's just kind of an indicator of using league average park factors, league average home run per fly ball rate stuff, and kind of predicting what a pitcher's ERA should look like given those league average numbers. So when you see a pitcher with, say, a 3.75 ERA, but he's got 3.42 XFIP, he's a little bit better um, than his ERA. And the vice versa for, say, Julius Chassin, 3.50 ERA last year, but almost one full run higher in XFIP, so he maybe wasn't as good. We're maybe looking at some regression there. So that's some stuff that I really like looking at throughout the season to say, okay, this guy's got a .5 ERA, but a 4.5 XFIP. He's definitely due for some regression. That's something that we can definitely use in our research. So that's why I list those two as my most important. And then K per nine, that's just how many strikeouts a batter gets over a nine inning period. Of course, higher the better. Um, walks per nine, same thing. Swinging strike rate is something I really like to look at. Anything above 10% is good. Anything above like 12% is getting in that elite area. As you see, Max Scherzer led everyone last year 16% swinging strike rate, which is just absolutely phenomenal. So you get in that 12 to 16% range. Those are your upside guys. Um, 
So that that's kind of how you break it out. Looking at Miles Mikolas compared to some of these other guys, I would much rather have Tanaka in that same price range um, when we're looking at FanDuel prices here. Tanaka strikes out like swinging strike rate of almost 5% more, which is really good. Um, he's going to get a lot more strikeouts for the same price. It's going to give you a ton more upside. So that's how I look at swinging strike rate. Then we've got ground ball rate and fly ball rate, um, as well as hard hit percent. So that's how hard. If you're getting into that 35 to 40 percent range, that pitcher is getting hit pretty hard. So that's pretty much the 2018 stats here. And then we're going to scroll over here. And this is all opponent data now. So this is the opponent's last season. So for instance, Scherzer is facing the Mets. So on this line, this is the Mets overall hitting last season. Um, no splits. So 305 Woba and a 95 WRC plus and a 154 ISO and a 22.7 K, K rate. Then um, I'm also going to have up here, I've got it hitting right now because it doesn't. it's not needed yet, is the last seven days, last 14 days, and then season. So we can kind of compare trends um, for a team and how they're hitting. So if we see a team that, okay, wow, they're the number one offense in baseball, but over the last 14 days, over the last seven days, they've really trended down and they're not doing so well, we can maybe start attacking a pitcher against those um, teams that are trending down in those areas. So that will be up once we get into that seven-day, 14-day range. And then we've got splits from 2018. Again, this is going to roll over to 2019 once we get a larger sample size. So this is the Mets, the opponent, they're hitting versus left-handers last season, and they're hitters versus right-handers. So then what I've done is this opponent versus daily spin. This is the most important section when looking at this because what it is doing, it, it is saying um, Max Scherzer is facing, or sorry, the Mets are facing Max Scherzer, who's a right-handed pitcher, so it automatically is pulling the splits from the right-handed section. So you don't got to go and you don't got to look at left-hand versus right-hand. Go over here and see which way he's throwing. This is just automatically that team versus whatever hand that pitcher is that day. So it just makes it a lot easier. Um, you could almost hide these stats, but it's, it is it is good to look at them and, and review them and just see if he is better against righties or lefties. But this is that day's splits versus whatever hand that pitcher is. So for instance, Blake Snell is the first left-hander down here on the list. So this opponent versus daily split is going to pull from X to AA here versus Max Scherzer versus the Mets here is going to pull from this blue section, which is AB to AE. So this opponent versus daily split, very important. That's what I'm really looking at each and every day. It is just pulling from whichever split they're facing. So one thing I didn't have last year, I had the team stacking, but I didn't have the individual player positions. I've added that this year, and something else I'm working on, it won't be out for opening day, is a lineup page. So as lineups come in and they are confirmed, I'm going to have that with stats beside each player with the listed lineup there, the starting pitcher, some stats on that starting pitcher. It's going to kind of give you a, a one place. There's different ways to look at the sheet. There's a lot of different ways to go about it, and that's just going to be another option if that's the way you like looking at it, is looking at the actual lineup without having multiple tabs open. That's really what I'm trying to accomplish with this cheat sheet is allowing you to do your research, look for those stats, look for the park factor, look for the weather, um, all that kind of stuff, all in one place without having to have, I used to do it, this before the cheat sheet, and I'd have, you know, doing my articles, even just doing my lineup research, making my lineups during the day, I'd have like 20, 25 tabs open on two or three different screens. So this is just kind of a way to really reduce that research time and up the success. So that's uh, the way I'm going about it. So I will be adding more and more. And if you do have ideas, please leave them in the comments section or hit me up in chat or on Twitter at Jaeger underscore bombs nine and let me know what you'd like on here to really help you out. So on the individual player tabs here, same thing. We've got early slate. We've got the actual, the individual players, their salaries, what hand they bat, um, the odds, the, the, you know, the total in that game is very important. You're going to want to attack the high totals for runs and that sort of thing when comparing players. And then um, next up, we've got the opponent and the park. Um, so JT Riomuto will be facing Julio Tehran um, in Philly. And then again, we got this park factor here. This time, the lower numbers are in green because we're looking at the offensive side of things. So we want um, the low numbers, which means a better hitting park. So that you can use that when you're comparing these uh, hitters here as well. So then we get into, again, we've got the splits. So we've got JT Riamuto's splits versus righties and versus lefties last season. And then we've got the batter versus daily split. Same as the opponent versus daily split, um, where 
Ryamuto is facing Tehran, who's a right-handed pitcher, so it's automatically pulling in his splits versus right-handers in this section versus uh, we'll go down here and we will look at Wilson Contreras. He is facing Mike Miner, who's a lefty, so this here is automatically pulling his splits from this section, which is his splits against left-handers. So it just kind of makes it easier so you don't got to go and switch tabs and find versus lefties versus righties. This is just that batter versus the daily split and makes it easier for comparing, say, Riamuto versus Sanchez or, or whoever. Um, as you can see, Riamuto was much better against right-handers last year. WRC plus numbers better. Power numbers about the same. Strikes out about 6% less and hit the ball at about a 3% hard contact um, increase over Gary Sanchez. So just looking at that, um, I would lean Riamuto. Of course, there's a lot more that goes into that there as well. Um, you want to look at the pitchers, the parks, that sort of thing. But that's just kind of how I analyze that. So that's the same. What I'm going to try and do, I'm trying to automate this automate this right now. So as I enter the lineups into that new lineups page I talked about, it will also eliminate these players from this sheet so that before lock, say all lineups are in, you're only going to see players in these player pools that are started. Um, that's something that's going to be coming. It's going to take a little bit of time, but for now, um, the lineups page will be first so that you can actually see who's in the lineup and you can use that as a reference tool in the future. These individual player tabs will have that as well. So again, it's going to be the same throughout. And with all my sheets, my green guys highlighted in green on the sheet that you're going to see, those are going to be my core plays at the position. Blue are going to be GPP. Purple are going to be cash game only. Um, and then you've got yellow for value and red if they're injured or out. But like I said, in the future, those players are just going to be eliminated from these player pools. So yeah, same for every position here. Going along, going down the line. And then we get into the team stacking tab. I like this when I'm working on GPP lineups. Um, I've got, so you got every team listed here. We've got their implied runs. We've got the park they play in, their park factor again. And then we've got stats for the Cubs. Their overall team hitting last year. They're hitting at home, hitting on the road versus righties versus lefties. And then they're facing Mike Miner, who's a lefty. This is his stats last year. Um, so that's just one way to look at it. So for instance, Cubs versus lefties here. As you can see, they were a tick down when it came to hitting lefties versus righties, but it's very close there. Um, there are teams like, for instance, um, we'll look at the Yankees. The Yankees were much better against lefties versus righties last year. Uh, much higher ISO, number one team versus lefties. So you can kind of compare it that way um, with all of this on one sheet. You've got the opponent pitcher, how well he's done. So someone I'm targeting, I do like Toronto um, in that early slate. It's The park isn't great. It's about mid middle of the pack when it comes to parks. It used to be you know one of the better hitter parks, but um, over the years it's sitting about middle of the pack. But what I like is, first of all, they were better against right-handed pitching last season, as you can see here, quite a bit better when it comes to righties versus lefties. And then he faced Jordan Zimmerman, who struggled last year. He was better than the year before, but he still struggled. And the one thing that really stood out, and you're going to find this in my article uh, later today, tonight, is that Zimmerman, while he did improve about two points on his ERA from his disaster 2017, the hard contact rate stayed up there in the 38% range, and the fly ball rate went up, and the home run to fly ball rate went up. So the upside is definitely there. He struggled in the spring. Not that I really looked at spring training a whole bunch because you don't really know who's working on what. Um, sometimes the pitchers don't really care if they give up runs in spring training because they're working on a new pitcher or whatever. Zimmerman's a, a veteran pitcher coming off of two pretty bad seasons. Um, so I really would have liked to see him, you know, maybe improve a little bit or make some strides versus still struggling in spring training. So I don't really have a big outcome. Um, projection for Jordan Zimmerman whatsoever. So I'll definitely be looking at Toronto. Um, they stand out here. And as you can see, they are fifth highest projected uh, implied runs right now. And this is updated. These stats are updated throughout the day because as, you know, some guys are scratched or not, um, the, the odds definitely change. So I'll definitely put in that in there. And then something else that's coming along the line as well um, that I'm working on in the back end right now is on these individual player tabs, starting pitchers, catchers, first base, all the positions is coming up with a model um, so that we can really rank 
you know, we can look at the odds, we can look at the over-under, we can look at a team's implied runs, we can look at their batter versus daily split, um, like we did here with Riamuto and Sanchez, and then we can really put some weight on that and then come up with a ranking for those first basemen, for the second baseman, for the starting pitcher. So that's something that's going to be coming down the line, not too far away. Um, I am working on it, but in order of things that are to come, we've got the lineup page that's going to be coming, and then we're going to have where I can automate and get rid of players that aren't starting that day in the player pool, and then, again, the model. So those are the next three things that are coming on the line with this sheet. Um, what else I've got here, finally, uh, lastly, last thing I'll talk about, is the stadium info. So weather is a big thing in DFS, MLB, uh, whether you're going to fade, you're going to hear a lot of uh, yellow, orange, orange, yellow, Kevin Roth, um, is definitely one of the best in the in the industry when it comes to information. Some of his stuff's behind a paywall, of course. So what I've done, you know, I like to share his tweets. I like to compare because he, he is an expert in the area. But what I've done here, if you want to do your own research, is under stadium info, I've got every team, um, which league they're in, stadium information, outdoor, indoor, retractable roof, all that information. And then what I've done, um, for instance, let's just go Chicago Cubs, is every one of these here is a link to the closest weather station to that stadium. So you can actually go and research the weather anytime, the day before, night before, hour before. You can go look at radars, you can look at um, forecasts, that sort of thing, uh, which can help you a lot. So for instance, let's just go Chicago. So if there's a game in Chicago today, you want to know what the weather is uh, around Wrigley. Just hover your mouse when you download your own copy here, hover your mouse over that or just copy and paste the link either or but you can just hover your mouse over that link and click on it it's going to open the weather underground link to um, that Wrigley Field Station which just happens to be like really close to Wrigley so a lot of these are very close to the stadium some of them are you know a few blocks away but for the most part it's going to give you the most accurate weather forecast from weather underground which I really love it's a free service um, so what what I usually do here is go look at the hourly I'll be looking at this like lunchtime or so I'll start looking at it so that you can really see hour by hour what the precipitation is, how much precipitation is coming, what the temperature is going to be, wind speed. Um, so that's something I will be adding is just kind of getting down what each direction of stadium is going to be so that when we get these wind speed information we can really decide um, is it advantageous for hitters, is it better for pitchers, and that sort of thing. So that's something else that's coming, um, looking to add to the weather forecast on the sheet there as well. So. The other thing I do is go back and I'll look at the, well, it's the wonder map. So the, the radar is pretty much what it is. And that's just going to take you in and, and give you that overview of, of the clouds and where the clouds are traveling and stuff. So kind of helps you whether, you know, if a game is like 50, 40 to 60% chance of rain during that game, one of the advantages in baseball, especially, you know, when we're talking GPPs, you know, for cash games, anyone sees like 40, 50% chance of rain, they're usually fading that game altogether. So, what you can do is go ahead and look at that. Okay, it's 40 to 50% chance, but the clouds look like they're going to miss the stadium. I'm going to take a chance here. That team's going to be low owned because people are going to avoid that game. Um, a lot of times you you can really hit lightning in a bottle where a lot of people fade a game that's supposed to rain. It doesn't rain. They play it out. There's a ton of scoring. Um, so you can win GPPs like that. That's just an advanced strategy that you can use with weather. Um, but overall, all that information is here that you can research. If there's anything else, Weather-wise that I can add to this page that you can just quickly see on a daily basis, definitely let me know and I will get that added to the sheet. I think I covered pretty much everything, the basics and how I go about looking at the stats and stuff. Like I said, if you got any questions or want to learn more about the sheet, definitely get into the Roto Pros member chat. Go get your free trial. Come in, I'm doing coaching. Um, later today, me and Josh also have a show we're recording with our picks. So if you want to just kind of go over our picks for opening day, we got that show coming out on YouTube. So make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. You're going to get uh, notifications when the show goes live. If we have live shows, this one's going to be a pre-recorded uh, later today. But you will get notifications once that uploaded to our channel. You can get in nice and easy and watch that. Um, with that, thanks for watching the video. Thanks for checking it out. Hope to see you in the Roto Pros chat. And let's go get some green screens tomorrow, everyone. Good luck.